And welcome to the Greensboro Coliseum for the ACC Championship game. The top two teams all year long in the conference will square off for the trophy. Louisville and NC State. And also at stake today, perhaps a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, a couple of weeks away from Selection Monday. It looks good for UConn, Stanford, and Texas A&M. But these five teams right now are fighting for that final top spot. NC State hoping for a win today and a South Carolina loss later on, and that might just be enough. Big day for you, women's college hoops, ACC, SEC, and Pac-12 championship games. And we start here in Greensboro, Beth Bowens, Debbie Antonelli, Holly Rowe, and a lot going on for these two clubs here today to prove, Debbie. This is going to be a great day, right? There's so much great basketball in front of us today, and it starts right here in the ACC tournament and for Louisville. This is a team that's been a former number one team in the country. They're led by Dana Evans. She's the back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year. She's come to this tournament and has a title in 2018, but last year didn't finish the deal, didn't make it to the semis. This is her third trip to the title game, and you see her numbers in the tournament. She needs to do better if they're going to win a championship. And on the other side, it's Elisa Kunain. Kunain is the center. She's the focal point. She's the anchor with which everything runs for NC State. She's played well. She's an All-American candidate. She's going to need to play well today if they're going to have a, a title. And when they met last month, Holly Rowe, it was NC State getting the upset. That's right. Louisville was the number one team in the country and lost on their home floor in part because of Elisa Kunain having a huge game. She was playing for the first time since coming back from COVID. And she had terrific help. Four players in double figures for the Wolfpack. But for Louisville, Dana Evans played great. 29 points, but no one else in double figures. The key today for both teams will be better balance and having their stars shine. Pack and Cardinals to start us off. We've got South Carolina and Georgia in the SEC final next. And tonight in prime time from Vegas, the Pac-12 final with Stanford and UCLA. Well, NC State's going to have to take care of the basketball against the Louisville changing defense, a high risk, high reward defensive effort by Louisville. And for the Cardinals, they're going to have to make shots because they're going to have to be able to score with a high-powered offensive attack that NC State brings. White jerseys for Louisville. They have two freshmen in the starting lineup today. Deanna Smith backs it out. Mikasa Robinson, and here is one of those rookies, Haley Van Lith. Robinson mid-range and gets it to go. If she's knocking those down yeah. for Louisville, that's a good sign she's their defensive specialist. Yeah, she would be the fifth option offensively, but she is the glue player. She does all the detail work for Jeff Walls, especially on the defensive end, and she'll have the Kayla Jones matchup to start. Reina Perez is the grad transfer point guard. She was the difference in the fourth quarter in the regular season meeting for NC State. And we'll keep our eye on Kai Crutchfield as well. She has been the lockdown defender for the Wolfpack as Kiana Smith hits the bucket. So and Louisville off to the 5-0 start. Maybe Wes Moore is seeing if his fifth option is hot, carrying over from the fourth quarter against Georgia Tech. But that time, Kai Crutchfield did not get back and match up in transition. So you make a mistake like that, these two teams are so equipped to score offensively, you can't have back-to-back -back mistakes in a championship game. Good depth for Louisville. They played full court press pretty much the entire game yesterday in the semifinal win as they top Syracuse. Both these teams are excellent at guarding the ball, and there's a miscommunication on a switch and a turnover. Cunane's got to shoot that. Robinson aggressive to the rim, can't finish. Rebound to Crutchfield. Looked like it caught <laughs> Elisa off guard that the Smaller defender was coming over on her. She'll try to wrap it around the backside and does. I mean, that's 6'5", incredibly gifted inside, can score left or right, also has three-point range for NC State. Elisa Kunain inside. All-America candidate in the middle for the Wolfpack. Smith. And Elisa has the rebound. Here is Reina Perez. 
outstanding in the Big West at Cal State Fullerton before arriving this year to replace Ace Koenig. Over the top, and it's good for Kayla Jones, the senior out of Jamesville, North Carolina. Really great set by NC State. They know Louisville's an up-the-line, overplaying team. It's a terrific time to go back door. Here's the other freshman in the lineup, and oh, Olivia Cochran showing off okay. the skills. All right, if this is all about offense today, you know I am perfectly fine with that. Two high-scoring teams getting us going today on our championship Sunday around women's basketball. Louisville likes to switch one through four. Crutchfield off the bounce. Van Lith has it. Haley had 24 points in their quarterfinal win a couple of days ago. Here she is with it. Top 10 prospect out of high school and airs that one out. Still trying to adjust to the energy of a championship game. Well, it's a new environment. It's a shot pressure environment. As good as these two teams are offensively, can you make enough shots under duress? And we expect a few nerves early. Jakia Brown-Turner, who came to the title game last year and played well to help NC State win their first title in 29 years. And Kunane in the one-on-one -on -one is too tough to deal with when she gets two feet in the paint. Smith circles it back outside. Keep your eye on Kai Crutchfield in this Dana Evans matchup, Beth. This is one to keep your eye on because Crutchfield has got to keep her in front. Evans gives it up to Robinson. And after making a shot, she's missed a couple and will commit the foul. So part of the reason why Wes Moore has Kayla Jones defending Mikasa Robinson is because Kayla Jones is his best weak side helper. And Mikasa Robinson is not a threat to score on most nights. Now she has to hit the mid-range 10-foot jump shot if she's given that. And NC State might give her that. But you make sure you box her out because she goes to the glass every time. Field. Brown Turner, she is looking for an explosion, has been quiet offensively through the first two games of the tournament, and that will go over to Louisville. And let's see if the cards get something going here for Dana Evans. She was the last starter to score in the semifinals yesterday. Subpar performance in the quarters two days ago. And she too looking for a breakout day. So it, to your point, Wes, or excuse me, Jeff Walls gets her off the ball for this set, puts her over to the wing so he can get her to her right hand. What a great call from the bench. Dana Evans hard off the bounce going right. Almost impossible to defend because she also, besides getting to the rim, can pull up and hit the mid-range or she can kick to the corner. And NC State can't help off that corner shooter. That's Kiana Smith. Dana Evans, 81 of 87 at the free throw line. 93% on the year, and that's her second miss of the tournament. What? What is going on? She never misses from the free throw line. Three-point Louisville lead. About halfway through this first quarter, ACC championship game. Mouse in the house. Got a smaller defender on her, and JBT gives it up. Kunane bothered on the shot. Elizabeth Dixon. They've got a couple of big bodies now, Louisville, that they can throw at Kunane inside. Well, Louisville's defense has to be disruptive. If you let NC State go pass, cut, pass, cut in rhythm, forget about it. They have too much offense. But if you make them put it on the deck and dribble into their shots, you have a better chance of defending. Van Lith missed the open look weak side. Kudane trying to back in on Dixon. Gets the touch. Good passer out of the post. Perez for three. Got it. Boy, Reina Perez's first big game experience was on the road at Louisville. Louisville is number one in the country. And she delivered. She handled the ball. She made shots. She's going to have to do that today. They made that a tough look for Evans, did State. 
Now Taylor Jones trying to post up on the smaller defender, and she's going to get whistled for the offensive foul as Robinson hit the deck. Four minutes to go in the first entertaining ACC final. I'll leave it at nine apiece. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Well, NC State wouldn't be in this championship moment if it wasn't for Kai Crutchfield, or should we call her Clutchfield. Huge three-point basket in the fourth quarter. Absolutely got her team to this championship moment. Not only that, but her defense was stifling on Georgia Tech's leading score. She is the reason that they got to this championship moment. Look at those numbers. Eight points in the fourth quarter. Beth, I stole that from you. Are you okay if I called her Clutchfield? I, I signed with that. I just wanted to show up in their notes for the NCAA tournament. Right, there Debbie? That's right. <laughs> Kai made the plays. Uh, low to my Lautman. And the jumper is good. That's a three-pointer for Elizabeth Balagoon. So as Holly talked about, Debbie, they need the others to help out yes. Evans today. Yep, uh, everyone else has to do their job exceptionally well. One more stop, one more made basket, one more detail on the offensive end. Kayla Jones off the mark. Here comes Dana Evans, the ACC two-time player of the year. Four years in a row for a Louisville player and five of the last six years. Dana's the winningest player in Louisville's history. She has four ACC regular season titles, one ACC tournament title. She's been to the Final Four as a freshman. She's been an All-American. She's back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year. It's an impressive resume when you look at where she came from in Gary, Indiana, and how hard she's worked to it, get to this point. It's what I call the Evans Lucian of Dana. Yes, it is. Off the bench to constantly better. Out of the shadows of Asia Durr, the Previous two-time ACC Player of the Year. And got to be in the conversation for National Player of the Year honors with just a, a handful of folks. No, I don't think there's any question she's in the conversation for that as well as a, a potentially number one or top three draft pick yes. for sure in the WNBA draft. You're going to get a look at Leah Boston of South Carolina coming up next. Stanford, they've been so balanced, I don't know if you could pick one. Of course, They're Aaron pretty McDonald good. was the player of the year out west uh, for Arizona. Yeah, Stanford is very good, very balanced, very hard to defend, and the best defensive team Tara Vanderveer's had in a long time. Gunain scores inside. Of course, there are also the two Fab Frosch and Paige Beckers at UConn, Caitlin Clark at Iowa. And I'm going to throw a, um, actually a Wusu in there who's been outstanding at Maryland. Uh, they, they, along with Baylor, perhaps two of the hottest teams in the country right now. Big Ten Player of the Year will be really interesting. Uh, Caitlin Clark at Iowa, Ashley Wusu at Maryland, Nas Hillman, Hillman yeah. Michigan. Here is Jada Boyd off of the NC State bench. Lost her footing and then lost the ball. So a post-to-post -post double by Jeff Walls to disrupt the quickness of Jada Boyd off the bounce. Watch this right here. She's going to catch it on the block. Good post-up position. We'll watch where Elizabeth Dixon comes from the top. So NC State on the weak side is standing around. You got to move. You got to cut. You got to play off that double. Alana Smith with the spin and got it up and over Kunain. She had 11 in the semis and is starting out well here today for Louisville. Without Reina Perez on the floor right now, Kai Crutchfield handling some point guard responsibility or lead guard, if you will. I wouldn't necessarily call her a point guard. Fouls on Elizabeth Dixon, her second. Don't forget on Monday, March 15th, I'm sure you've already got it on the calendar. That's the NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by Capital One. 7 Eastern on ESPN, the reveal of the 64 team field. Bonus hour of coverage afterwards on ESPNU. It will be an S curve from 1 to 64 as Brown Turner scores on the left side. And the entire tournament will be played in and around San Antonio with the Final Four, along with the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16, all at the Alamo Dome. Two new format changes for this year because of COVID that are going to add a lot of excitement to the women's game. 
Cochran, nice step back, short. Just like the men, too, there will be a, a couple of teams on hold, on standby, just in case there is a COVID issue that may open up an opportunity for one of those teams that initially finishes outside the bracket. There could be a replacement as the Wolfpack get the takeaway and the bucket for Jada Boyd. Well, they get a big break right there, but that was a terrific skip pass over the top of the defense by Kunain to give Crutchfield a chance to attack that closeout. That's better activity on the weak side by NC State. Let's see, do the Wolfpack run a double at Evans here to close out the quarter? Or will Dana get an opportunity? Has to give it up and gives it away and not a good look at all for the top seeded Cardinals. Do not get a shot, but they will take the lead into the second quarter, Debbie. The Cardinals, a one-point lead going into the second. Kunane with the reverse. Smith in transition. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. ACC Championship Game, Greensboro Coliseum. Beth Moens, Debbie Antonelli, Holly Rowe, live and in person for some college hoops. This is one of the stories so far in the tournament. The ACC's Player of the Year has been held in check. The good news for Louisville is the others have helped her out and they have the one point lead as we head into the second quarter. I mean, Louisville has always had good balance this year and now they've gotten uh, better depth as the season has gone on and it's exactly what you would want as a coach. And Narika Kono came off the bench yesterday and was a huge surprise. 23 bench points for Louisville in the semifinals. And the Wolfpack turn it over. Good change defensively by Jeff Walls, which made NC State hesitate, causing the turnover. Jeff has the Cardinals in the ACC final for the third time in four years. They won it in 2018, runners up in 2019. They got bumped early last year. They come in as the four time reigning regular season champs in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Olivia Cochran trying to back in on Kunane, and Elise has got it. Yeah, Kunane knows they're going to attack her on the defensive end, and she stays vertical and holds her ground. Kunane directing some traffic. They are the defending ACC tournament champs. They won it last year for the first time since 1991 in the Yao era. Reina Perez with the raindrop. There's a lot of great graduate transfers around the women's landscape, but I'm telling you right now, she's underrated. She has changed everything about NC State's outlook for the season. You know, we're a top 10 team. She's helped make them a final four potential team. Best assist to turnover ratio in the league. And Enrico Pono, confident after a double digit scoring effort in the semis with her first bucket today. So Beth, I'm a big believer that you can never affect the rhythm of the game if you don't have multiple defensive looks. And we've already seen Jeff Walls change the rhythm for his team with several different defensive, uh, uh, dif defensive stances. What you got for us, Holly? Well, you saw Narika Kono really get into a rhythm there with that shot. She had 10 points yesterday in just 11 minutes of play. She's from Japan. Jeff Walls flew over 20 hours to go and meet with her and her family in Tokyo. They met, they all took trains, met together in Tokyo, and then they all departed, and Jeff flew from Tokyo back to Ottawa on another recruiting visit. He said, somebody sent me some videotape on her. We liked what we saw, and she has literally come a long way. She has suffered some real homesickness, though. She hasn't been able to go home to see her family because of the pandemic, and uh, she's really playing great for Louisville. The dedication of the coaches on the recruiting trail. You go end to end all over the world yep. to find the right mixture of skill set and character to continue to build your culture. And it's going to change even more in the coming years, right, with the transfer portal as active as it is now around college athletics. So I mean, forget a about it. A lot going on. Forget about it, A lot, it, of, movement. A lot free, of movement. It's free agency, and everyone wants to take their talents to South Beach. <laughs> Tunane, the skip. Boyd got a little too deep. 
and then spent too yeah. much time in the lane. So Jeff Walls has had a terrific game plan for Jada Boyd because she is by far the most explosive player for NC State. They brought a double, they've played zone when she's in there, they've mixed up their coverages on her, and the last three times she's touched the ball, she has hesitated. It's exactly what you want her to do. Wayne That's is, uh, coach in Louisville history. He knows all about Jada Boyd. She dropped 16 on the Ville in their regular season matchup. A win for NC State. The first team ever to beat two top-ranked foes on the road. And they will score inside, and there's Boyd over Cohen. Maybe that will give her some confidence because that is a terrific high-low feed in their transition game. Not their primary break, their secondary option. Evans can't knock it down. Louisville now one for five in this second quarter, and the turnover, a little sloppy for the pack. Let me say this about Jeff Walls and Wes Moore, Beth, because they both are incredibly analytical coaches. Okay, they're they're all about game planning and, and their their analytics, but they have great instinct and feel for the game. And you can see the adjustments that both of them have made so far in the game. They know each other so well. Oh, Smith able to knock it down. She's got nine to lead all scorers. It's Louisville back on top. Boyd off the ball fake. Cochran's got it. Good switch to his own. Haley Van Lith back on the floor here for Louisville. Smith. Cunane and Cochran, that's a terrific battle inside. And NC State on the defensive end is doing a much better job guarding the ball. I thought Georgia Tech's team was very aggressive. Nell Fortner did a terrific job bringing her team here ready to play. If, if Louisville becomes a jump shooting team, that is to NC State's advantage. Crutchfield, got it, assisted Cunane. Elisa Cunane is a willing passer. She sees the floor so well for 6-5 with her back to the basket. She's done a much better job reading where the double comes from. How about three assists today, Debbie, already for the big girl? You gotta love the ball movement right here. Good duck in and timing. She sees Haley Van Lith dig. Too late to recover, and NC State, as good as they are feeding the post, they are really good at relocating on the perimeter after they make the feed. They've been doing the job defensively. Van Lith and Evans held to just two points so far in this first half. A two-point state lead. 2-3 Two, zone. <laughs> Offensive foul on Cunane. Trying to displace the defender. You a referee equally favorable on the inside. Not what's fair, and she knocks Romani Parker over. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ESPN. Yep, it is Championship Sunday. Welcome into the Audi Halftime Report. We're going to get to a lot of that at halftime, but right now, Rebecca Lobo, Andy Landers, I'm Ashley Brewer. Coach, what are you seeing from this game so far? I'm seeing Louisville struggle to establish a post game, but very good with their guards off the bounce. And NC State has had really nice patience on the offensive end. When they haven't turned it over, they've gotten... We are under five minutes to go here in the first half at a two-point NC State lead as they try and go back-to-back -back with ACC tournament crowns. A lot on the line for NC State with a really good resume. Uh, they... Need some help probably in the SEC championship game coming up next. But if Georgia can knock off South Carolina and NC State wins today, Charlie Cream in his latest bracketology says State moves up to the top line as a number one. Along with UConn, Stanford, and Texas A&M. And a foul on the shot and a patient whistle right there. It's gonna go against Parker. Oh, Romani Parker, who took the three, the last possession, coming off the ATO, was her first three-point attempt of the season. 
I don't know if that's a secret weapon Jeff Walls has been building on the side that we weren't aware of, but she's gotten a lot of playing time here in the postseason. She's not a player that he has used in a regular season a lot. Big day of college hoops for you. Champ Week rolls on today. We've got two more women's title games for you on ESPN2. The SEC final coming up next. Surprise Georgia against South Carolina and then Stanford UCLA tonight in prime time. And on the men's side this afternoon, regular season finale, Texas Tech and Baylor, big time NCAA tournament implications on the men's side. That's at four o'clock on ESPN. Struggles in this second quarter for the Louisville offense. They're just two of eight. They've played a lot of this second quarter without Dana Evans on the floor. Haley Van Lift knocks it down, and that's her first bucket. One of the top freshmen in the country coming in to play this season. Perez throws it away into traffic. Smith. Patient, hesitates, takes it to the rim, and misses the gimme. State comes out with a Jones. Brown Turner on the run, Crutchfield, spotting up short. And a reach-in foul gonna be called against State. It's on Camille Hobby. Shot selection, so important uh, for both teams right now. Dana Evans returns to the floor. Ten points below her average and her field goal percentage under 30% through the first two and a half games of this tournament. One for five to start today. She does not get a look there, but Haley Van Lid yeah. does and is fired up after back-to-back -back makes. That pass-through cut or that ghost screen that Jeff Walls likes to run in the middle third of the floor, very effective because if you don't communicate defensively, you allow that open shot. Got the last five points for Louisville. And they're back on top. Jones spins into the double team and is the last to touch it out of bounds. The NC State looks flat-footed. They don't look like they're connected. This is a, a dip in their emotion and the game. Now, their emotion is gonna go back up as the game comes towards a close, but right now they look like they better pick it up a little bit because Louisville's got the momentum. And you better guard Haley Van Lis. She's hit the last two buckets. Jeff Walls doesn't overcoach it. If you got a hot hand or somebody scores, they go right back to him. Good anticipation by Kayla Jones. Perez. Weak side of Crutchfield. They'll get another look from deep. And out of sorts now for NC State. You know, without Kunane on the floor, they don't have that low, similar low post game. Like, they can play to and through her because she's such a good facilitator. You already mentioned she has three assists in the game. And Wes Moore is using his uh, uh, minutes with Kunane uh, around a one possession game to kind of save her for the second half. Trying to ice Kono and keep her on that side of the floor. Boy, the pack have picked it up defensively, getting in people's grills. Evans with contact, offensive foul. That's her first. And look who it is, taking it on the chin, Crutchfield. You referee the defense here. Does Crutchfield beat her to the spot? And does Dana Evans lean in? I'm not sure. No, it didn't look like it there on the replay, did it? No, uh, but we get the benefit of a second look. Under a minute and a half to go here in the second ACC championship game. State in a bit of a funk. They've missed their last four tries. They've been hurt by eight turnovers here in the first half. 
they like to run four out, one in, but with the lineup and personnel they have on the floor, Boyd and Hobby both end up on the block, which affects the spacing that NC State likes to play with. It makes it easier for Louisville to defend them. Full nose pass to no one in particular, and it's nothing but black jerseys around it. In the trail, good for Boyd. That's a great look by Jakia Brown-Turner. She set up that 15-footer for Jada Boyd because she looked in the post first, ball faked in there, and that made the defense seek the level of the ball. That's how you open up the top of the floor. State by one, cards perhaps with the final chance to grab the lead back. Evans pass picked off. And out of bounds, it'll stay with Louisville six seconds left. So the last time Louisville had the last possession of the first quarter, they turned it over. They went to their horn set. They're gonna have a sideline out of bounds here. Debbie, would you like to see Evans go one on one here? Keep I would the ball like on her hands. One four low, clear it yeah. out, let her go. Yeah. Here she is. ACC player of the year. She gives it back to Van Liff. Well, he prefers Van Liff to take this shot. Does not get it up. Bad clock management at the end of the first and second quarters for Louisville. Missed chances. And as a result, it's NC State. I believe with perhaps a second left, it ended up being a shot clock violation. Catch and shoot. One point game at the break. The top two seeds in the Atlantic Coast Conference still in the hunt for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Six points for Kunain, a couple for Dana Evans. Louisville did not score in the final three minutes of the half. And as a result, they are down a point to the defending champs. And let's uh, check in right now with Holly and Wes Moore. Well, Coach Moore, how do you describe that defensive pressure late in the second quarter? It felt like your team really turned it up. Yeah, I'm proud of them. I think we're focused. I think we're locked in. Obviously, Louisville has a lot of weapons. You're going to give up some buckets. But, uh, yeah, I think we've done a nice job. Now we just need to get going offensively, get some people to knock down a few shots. What will it take for you guys to get going offensively? Where do you focus? Yeah, you know, we got to work inside out. We've got to get at least the touches. Obviously, Louisville's playing a lot of zone to try to keep it out of the inside. I get that. And now we're going to have to, at some point, knock down a couple of threes to maybe get them out of that. All right, thank you so All much, right, Wes Moore. Holly. NC State with a one-point lead at the half. Let's check in now with our folks in the ACC studio. We'll be back. It is championship. Holly Rowe, throughout that first half, Debbie, we saw a little bit of everything from Elisa Kunain, and only 15 minutes, so she should be fresh for this second half. That's right, Beth. I mean, three games in three days is usually taxing on bigs, but Kunain was able to get some minutes on the bench. And when she's on the floor, you've, you've heard Rebecca talk about it in the studio. We talked about it in the first half. Play through and two. Kunain on the inside. Three assists. She does a good job of reading the defense. She posts up strong. She changes the space with just her post-up ability. And she's got to have a big second half for NC State to be able to get back-to-back -back ACC championships. And for more on Kunain, let's go to Holly. Well, Elisa Kunain grew up just about 25 miles away from here in Summerfield, North Carolina. She came to this tournament as a little girl. And look at this precious picture with Erlena Larkins from North Carolina. Now here she is playing on that same court, and she's been terrific. She's got to get going, though. No points in that second quarter. They need her to show up big and keep that dream of herself as a little girl alive of winning a championship here on this floor. I don't know about that Carolina blue Ooh. that she's wearing there, but let me tell you something. Sylvia Hatchell, the North Carolina coach, told me that Elisa Kunain is the only player in the state of North Carolina that declined to make an official visit. Oh. So that's for Wolfpack Nation out there to know that Elisa Kunain is all red. <laughs> coach Hatchell, I believe, is also the only one that declined your uh, chance to go to Chapel Hill, right? Is that, is that accurate? <laughs> No, she wanted me badly. <laughs> <laughs> Beth Mullins and Wolfpack alum Debbie Antonelli, Holly Rowe with you. We've got 20 minutes to play for an ACC championship. The first of our triple header today, 
SEC final coming up next, and then prime time tonight. The Red Hat Stanford Cardinal and the UCLA Bruins for a third time they split their regular season matchups. Well, I'm looking forward to watching Stanford play. That's must-see TV. Anytime Tara Vanderveer's team, especially this year, because they can score and they can defend. That is a tough task for Corey Close's group. But I'm telling you, Charisma Osborne, underrated yeah. in the Pac-12 as a guard and underrated on the national scene as well. He's had a great year. Quiet in one of the regular season matchups, starred in the other for the Bruins as they try and win the Pac-12 for the second time. Stanford, the regular season champs out there. Of course, a lot at stake in the SEC final. Georgia moving up in the minds of the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. And for South Carolina, it's a foul here on Kunane, her second. For South Carolina, after they lost the regular season finale to Texas A&M, a chance now to probably lock down a one seed in the NCAA tournament if they win coming up next. Don Staley, Joni Taylor. Hey, Beth, listen, Elisa Kunane needs to get as many touches as she can right now in the second half. But so does Aaliyah Boston in that Georgia matchup. She should take the most shots for South Carolina today. They only had the one free throw attempt in the first half, did Louisville. And they will grab the lead back, thanks to Olivia Cochran. Lana Smith led them with nine points in the first half. Balanced attack for the pack through the first 20 minutes. Here is a catch for Kunane. And a move to the rim for two. Good post-to-post -post screen inside by Kayla Jones, who's been quiet offensively, but has done a really nice job with the detail work. And lift off the crossover. Yeah, that's Side. not, that's not the shot, turner. Beth. That's not what Jeff needs. Jeff Walls wants his team to move the ball. And when you don't take shots in the offense, then you cannot get back in transition in time to match up. And Jakia Brown-Turner takes advantage. Got to the left side for a three-point lead. Brandon Perez really jumping out, trying to keep that ball on one side of the floor. Here is Dana Evans. Good help from her teammates in the first half. Let's see if she takes on a heavier load here in the second. Misses her first shot opportunity. And a little bit of frustration from Dana. She's one yep. for six today. So this is a real character building opportunity for Dana Evans because she has struggled in this tournament shooting the ball. But there was a point in the quarterfinals where she decided that she was going to make plays for others, and she did that, and her team won. And this might be a time right here to help get herself going by moving the ball. Kunane immediately doubled, and a reach-in foul will be called on Kiana Smith. Now, this is a tough two right here by Evans. This is a contested drive to the paint in a crowd, off balance. Not a good look. This is the ACC's leading scorer, better than 20 points a game. Nobody on the men's side in the ACC scored 20 points a game this year. Off the backboard and in for Brown Turner, and she's hit a couple in a row. And the biggest lead of the day for NC State. Here comes Evans up to the top. Smith elects to go to the left instead. Evans defended by Crutchfield. Almost turned it over, knocked out by Perez. Well, guys, uh, Jakia Brown-Turner having a terrific game so far today, and I have to give her some real props. Everybody out there for NC State looks amazing, and that's because she does almost everyone's hair on the team. She specializes in sew-ins. She's a terrific cosmetologist, and she is a teammate doing it all for her team right now. Can also light up that scoreboard, Holly Rowe. A couple of buckets for her and an NC State lead. When two black head coaches are in the finals of the SEC, you know, we are mirroring what what the rest of the country can look like when you give black women an opportunity uh, to head some programs. Uh, well said by Dawn Staley uh, after the semifinals yesterday. 
couple of African-American females leading the way for Georgia and South Carolina in our SEC championship game coming up next. And since it's Women's History Month, let's continue with the all-time winningest coach, Stanford's Tara Vanderveer, as well as Corey Close at UCLA coming up later tonight. Of course, there is always room for the fellas as well, and we've got two of the best here, Wes Moore on that NC State sideline, Jeff Walls for Louisville. The winner gets the ACC championship, and for NC State, perhaps still a crack at a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, although Debbie, it may not be as significant this year since there's no home court advantage to worry about. Well, and we have the true S curve. Yes. So if the committee gets it right, which we assume they will, then it should be really compelling because the S curve matches up uh, seeding one through 64. So one plays 64, two, 63, et cetera. And this is the first trip to the free throw line for Kunain. So Louisville's done a very good job of keeping her off the line. Maybe NC State hasn't done a good enough job of getting her to the line. 8-0 run for NC State, and it ends right there. Kiana Smith, perhaps in that last timeout, Jeff Walls lit a little fire under his stagnant offense. Well, I think, again, picking up full court uh, can change the rhythm of your team. And playing better defense, changing your defense, can get your team going offensively. And see, Cochran Perez got a little too handsy there. Sorry, Debbie. No, Beth Perez doing the right thing. When they jump out on that hedge, you attack the outside hip of the big. It's what you drill and practice every day to have good offensive habits in that ball screen offense. No uh, significant foul issues for either side thus far. Turner gets it into Kunane, immediately faces up and gets stripped from behind. Smith running with Evans. Dana leaks out behind the line, finds a driving lane and the window. In transition off their defense, Evans shakes free. It's a great dig by Kiana Smith from the backside. And Dana's first bucket in 20 minutes of clock time as Kunane counters with the basket. Neither one of the superstars scored in that second quarter. Trying to heat things up here in the third. Hartfield got caught in the screen. Evans with a little space, missed it. Boy, she's made that shot a million times. Two hard dribbles to the elbow. Kunane. Hard. See, so Cockper's not letting Kunane catch it with two feet in the paint. Smith has a shot, and that won't fall. Brown Turner will push. Somebody looking for an easy bucket here either way. Well, Kunane can shoot that trail three. Kunane on Dixon. This is a couple in a row on the block. Cochran, Dixon mid-range, good. Nice work inside, good interior passing. We haven't had a whistle in a while. A little fatigue setting in maybe. Third day in a row for these two teams. The top two seeds in the ACC Tournament Championship game. Brown Turner. Kunane, offensive rebound. Misses a third straight. Evans. Now the degree of difficulty on some of the shots Dana has taken have been probably not the best choices. Two for nine. Kayla Jones going to work. Another missed layup for NC State. So they're getting the ball where they want to. They're not finishing the plays. That's three basket opportunities at the rim. And they've missed five chip shots now in a row and missed an opportunity to bust this thing open a bit. Van Lift to the left side. No. 
Got her own miss. Heaves it back to Evans. Dana into the lane. That one was bothered by Cunane. Cochran, multiple opportunities for the Cards. Cochran using that strong lower body to clear out some room. Big rebound inside. Jakia's pass, Aaron into the first row. One point game, three minutes to go in the third. This is how you rebound in traffic. Kunain affects the shot. Watch Cochran clear out a little room inside. One point game in the ACC championship this afternoon in Greensboro. First of our three championship games coming your way as we Close out the regular season coming up this week with a couple of other, the Big 10, the Big 12 will get underway midweek. NC State looking to repeat and Louisville looking for its second championship since they joined the ACC a handful of years ago. They won it all in 2018. Well, I've been fortunate enough to win one, but I don't remember the one we won. I remember the two we lost. Oh, no. Dixon, got it to go. I mean, it, it's been around for 44 years. It's the longest running tournament in women's basketball history, Debbie, and certainly a special moment for the team that's out there on the floor when the balloons descend from the rafters. A coveted crown is the ACC championship. Incredible performers in this league over the course of its history. There are the balloons ready to fall. How about this for multiple MVP winners in ACC history? Pam Leek, Don Staley, Wendy Palmer, Tracy Reed, Georgia Schweitzer, Asia Durr, Dana Evans, and Alana Beard and Alyssa Thomas, three-time regular season MVPs in ACC history. Some of the all-time greats as Camille Hobby turns and hits. Let's see if Camille Hobby and Jada Boyd can get something mixed together on the inside. A different look on the front line for Westmore right now. 11th lead change. Neither side's been up by more than seven points today. And now Dana Evans is two for 11. And the cold shooting here in Greensboro continues for the ACC's Player of the Year. Worst reminder, she has been as clutch as anyone in the country in the final five minutes of ball games. See, that's it. Her time is still to come. A huge mistake by NC State. You dribble into the switch, and Jakia Brown-Turner has a big honor and dribbles right back to let them switch and trap her. Switch back is what I meant. Dixon got muscled out of the paint. And a nice drive to the rim. Dana Evans lays it in on the left side. Louisville back in front. That's the explosiveness of Evans right there on display. Off the bounce, going left with her offhand. Bobby thinks she's got the advantage. Tough shot, good defense by Dixon. Here comes Evans, three on two. Smith running the floor, and one for Louisville. Two huge transition opportunities off of NC State's back-to-back -back mistakes. Beth, remember in the first half I talked about, you cannot have back-to-back -back mistakes in a championship game, and this is why. You give the other team momentum, two runouts, two layups for Louisville, and now they've taken the lead with the momentum. Cards have hit four of their last five shots, while NC State has missed six of its last seven. And the Ville will have another chance here. Jeff Walls settling the play from the sideline. He's sensing Dana needs a shot. And Dana gets a shot. That's why he goes to Horns, two bigs on the elbow and let her attack off the bounce. Now you're seeing the confident ACC player of the year back to back show up in a big moment. She's changing the game right now, Beth. 12-2 run over the last four minutes for Louisville. Final seconds of this third quarter. 
Brown Turner, the kick out. Perez fouled with two seconds to go by Evans. That'll be the second on Dana. Neither side in the bonus. Oh, check that. That will be the fifth on the cards. Freebies for Perez. Well, this is an important play right here for Perez because with 2.7, a poor decision there by Louisville to foul. Give NC State a chance in that 12-2 run to, to get something back going positive going to the break of the quarter. After a two-point first half, Evans with six in just the last couple of minutes, helping turn things around for the cards. Not sure what that was about, oh. but this equivalent of icing the shooter potentially. Only the 10th combined free throw of the game for these two. It's good from Perez. Three point game. Evans comes up short. 43 40, the top seed in front, heading to the fourth quarter in the ACC championship game. They ended on a 12 4 run, Debbie. It's a feel and a call from the bench. Horns off the bounce. Evans getting going. This was what happened at the end of last year's uh, semifinal here, Debbie. Yeah, Dana Evans doesn't finish this play, and Florida State goes on to advance to the championship game. And since then, Dana remembers. And she used it as motivation through the year because that was the last time they suited up last year because of the pandemic. And this year, she has been a closer. That has become who she is at the end of the games. And now you can see she's starting to get hot and she knows this is her team. She told Holly yesterday, it's my team, my responsibility. She's the only senior and she's the winningest player in their history. If they're gonna win, it's gonna be because Dana Evans is gonna make plays right now. Holly? And that's right, guys, I know we've been talking about what she hasn't done because she has struggled here at this tournament, but think about this. She has started every single game this season, despite going through COVID, playing almost 33 minutes a game. She has been the heartbeat of this team all year. And even when she struggled, she's doing a lot of other things, defending well and trying to be that voice down the stretch. Winningest player in Louisville history. Not Asia Durr, not Angel McCaffrey, not any of the other greats they've had. It's her run in recent years, and she'd love to cap off this last regular season with a championship. Here she is, ball in hand. Good help. Kono got to the rim. I mean, maybe got away with the travel. Kunain, well rested, turns it over. She didn't play those last couple of minutes of that third quarter. Evans in the trail for three. Got it! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The top seed doing the talking now. A 17-4 run. And their biggest lead of the day. Kai Crutchfield. Good. The one thing NC State has had in the fourth quarter all season long is offensive maturity. They have a veteran season club. You're not going to see them get rattled offensively. They have to stick to their good offensive habits right now and be really good in the detail. Because Beth, we talked about game slippage yesterday. That's about detail when the game's on the line and making shots under duress. NC State with numbers if they hustle. And Boyd fouled by Parker. Game slippage is something you anticipate can happen when the most important moments of the game happen. That's about making sure your screening angles are good. You run the floor hard and wide. You make sure you go to the glass. You box out and you close out. And who wants the ball late? Who wants to be making the big decisions to decide it? Holly Rowe's been reporting throughout the tournament. A player like Olisa Kunang grew up watching this tournament as a youngster. 
always dreamed of being here. Cut down the nets last year, did NC State. They need a fourth quarter comeback to do it again. Kunain immediately doubled, kicks out to Perez. Out of bounds to Louisville. Kayla Jones quiet, one for four for NC State. She does have seven rebounds. Smith to the right side, no. Big play by Cochran to get him another look. Cochran again and a foul inside. Olivia going toe to toe with Elisa. Watch the battle on the weak side for the rebound. How about the want to from the freshman and the third foul on Kunain? Evans short after the bump. NC State wanted an offensive foul. So there was a moment in the game yesterday for NC State against Georgia Tech where Georgia Tech clearly was the tougher team. NC State's got to get tougher right now. Kunain fouled. You got to get tougher. You got to play through some things that don't go your way. And getting the ball on the block to Elisa Kunain is a good idea. Nobody feeds the post better than NC State. That is the fourth personal foul now on Liz Dixon. First one in trouble here. Just under seven to play. Most teams uh, ending their season, uh, regular season today. There are a few more that will continue on next week. And of course, it all leads to Selection Monday, March 15th at 8 Eastern. And then right after the selection show, sign up for the Women's Tournament Challenge on ESPN.com. Fill out your bracket, see how you match up against the experts. Entire tournament will head to Texas with the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, and Final Four all in San Antonio. Jeff Walls has played 10 players. Mikasa Robinson checks in, Beth. Running the point right now. Smaller lineup on the floor for Louisville. Yeah, they're going with four guards. Van Lith tries to relocate. Perez on her defensively. On that left hand, nice feed to Robinson. What a great cut. She's the glue, Mikasa Robinson. A nice find by Van Lith. Tunane really fighting and battling inside with Cochran for position. A touch for Kunain off glass. 15 now for Lisa. Just the way a championship game should be. Cochran now trying to post up, faces up. Working on the All-American. Go good for Cochran. Big girls going to work right now. Eight point seven boards for the freshman. Back to Kunain. Immediately doubled. Perez will try and open things up with the three. No. Boyd swooping in for the stick back. Jada Boyd doing her thing. That's what she does well for NC State. Explosive around the offensive boards. Evans got it. Making plays at both ends. Under five minutes to go for the ACC championship. Dana Evans is four for her last seven. 
throw the double at Perez. Reyna handles it. Now Kunane, space. You let her get to that left shoulder and that half hook. So skilled at 6-5. NC State four out, one in. That's what they do. They're doing a good job of spacing the floor around Kunane. Evans running the baseline to receive. Two-man game with Cochran. Evans keeping the dribble alive. Tried to thread the needle and it's picked off. Crutchfield, one on three, will take it herself. In and out. Second chance, third chance. Kayla Jones. Couple of big offensive rebounds for NC State. Look at Jeff Walls is going, calm down, let's execute. Flare screen for Smith. Chance here for NC State to take the lead. Boyd. Oh, she oh, walked. walked. I mean, Jada Boyd doesn't typically put it on the floor from that far away from the basket. You got to go to what's working. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Stars are shining when it matters the most in the ACC championship game. Kunane and Evans big in the second half. Both sides shooting 50% here in the fourth quarter. A one point Louisville lead for the ACC championship. 323 to go. Can Dana Evans secure her second ACC crown? Can Alyssa Kunane go back to back with NC State? And for the Wolfpack, can they win this and then root for Georgia to beat South Carolina in the SEC final and perhaps grab a one seed for the NCAA tournament? Gamecocks and Dogs coming up next. And then Stanford, UCLA in primetime tonight in the Pac-12 championship. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli, Holly Rowe with you. There's Mikasa Robinson off the mark. Good D by the Wolfpack coming out of that ATO. You got to guard the ball, Beth. Under 10 on the shot clock. Perez working with Kunane. Elisa's got the mismatch. Instead, Jones will fire from deep. Good box out, but perhaps too good from Louisville and a foul. How about the confidence of Kayla Jones, the senior? She's not hit a lot of shots today, but has 10 rebounds to go with her four points. I've said all season she's the best hybrid four in the country. A hybrid four not only shoots the three, but can make decisions on the top of the floor and play in that ball screen offense and motion offense that Westmore likes to play. I don't think there's anybody else like her in the country. Timeouts available for both coaches. Fouls to give for both sides. One left to give for Louisville. Possession arrow is with the cards. Boyd calling for it. From a tough angle, Kunane, second chance and a foul on Cochran. Boyd's got Mouse in the house and tries to counter. When you catch it that deep, you gotta explode and score over a smaller defender. And Kunane bails them out with another offensive rebound here in the fourth quarter. Third foul on Cochran, four on Dixon for the two big girls trying to defend Kunane. Lisa now with 18 points, eight rebounds. Well balanced on both sides today. Gets a pair there for our 13th lead change of the afternoon and it's state by one. We're under the five minute mark. Well, that usually means it's Dana Evans time for the Ville. Number one in white.
This yeah. Evans can go either way with it. Yeah, that horn set has been dangerous for NC State with Evans with the ball. Waiting to the bucket. That's why. 15 for Dana. Louisville back on top. Under two minutes to go. Kunane with position. Kick out Perez three. Kono with a great box out and that allows Van Lith to go get it. That's the detail I'm talking about, Beth. That's where you know you've got good habits. When the game's on the line, you can make those plays. That detail. Ball in the lead for the Cardinals. Here we go again with Dana. I don't know if there's another player in the country who has confidence at this point in the game more than Dana Evans. Oh, well, Cochran couldn't handle it, and it goes back to State. And another look at a lead. One minute to go. Oh, great up screen. Kunane left side foul. That's the fourth on Cochran. Grid set by Wes Moore, and he saves it for inside a minute. We have not seen that up screen for Kunane all game. Watch the screen come from Crutchfield, and they're actually late delivering the basketball. Kunane was open, and because they were late getting it to her, Cochran was late getting there and creates the foul, and Kunane at the line where she has been good all year. Five of six today. Ties it. Misses the second. Field on Evans. NC State only one team foul. Dana, no good. Rebound, Kunane. Shot clock is off for NC State. Westmore doesn't need to burn a timeout either. You don't want Louisville to change their defense. Perez. We'll keep it and take it and hit it with 2.1 to go. Timeout Louisville to advance to midcourt. And it's the newcomer, the grand transfer. After Kunane was covered, she held it and hit it. I love this strategy. No timeout. You look inside. Perez with a big bucket for the pass. When the first option isn't there, Debbie, you better be ready if you're plan B. I mean, this is a terrific play. I talked about offensive maturity. NC State doesn't need to call timeout to set up a play. You don't want Louisville to change their defense. You want to try to score as quickly as you can or as little time on the clock. And NC State's got fouls to give here, so keep an eye on that. They only have one team foul with 2.1 on the clock. We talked earlier about Dana Evans and her chance last year and the miss late. Will she get another opportunity or will NC State be able to eat away at this clock with their fouls to give? If you make them catch the ball away from the basket and if you can put it on the floor and foul, if I'm Jeff Walls, I'm trying to make a direct pass into the scoring area so NC State can't foul. Two to tie, Van Lith, pass broken up, out of bounds. It will stay with Louisville, one second to go. Timeout, Cardinals. I love the play call. What a great defensive stance by NC State. One second to go for the ACC championship. And what a way to start our championship Sunday. SEC final is coming up next. Pac-12 championship later tonight. Next weekend, we got Big Ten and Big 12. And 
on to the NCAA tournament. You got time to catch and shoot. You might even have time to put it on the floor real quickly. But with the ball being inbounded on the baseline, NC State cannot afford to foul here. You switch on everything. You don't let anybody cut freely to the ball, Beth, but you do have you do have fouls to give if you need to foul, but you don't foul somebody in the act of shooting. I don't think you foul right, you just play good D. Inbound to Evans. Good if it goes. And it comes up short. NC State back-to-back -back ACC Tournament Champions. Last year they won it with MVP point guard Ace Koenig. Her grad student replacement wins it for the pack this year in the waning seconds. 58-56 state over Louisville. And still alive with a crack at a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Don't forget, for more coverage, you can head over to ACC Network postgame, and we'll have more from Greensboro Coliseum. One point three. You go to your closer. Kai Crutchfield does a great job contesting. And Louisville comes up short. Back-to-back -back ACC championships for NC State. A devastating loss for Dana Evans and crew. However, they're going to be a tough out in the NCAA tournament, no matter what their seed is. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Reina Perez. The time is winding down, and you haven't hit a shot in the second half. How did you have the courage to rise up with three seconds left? Uh, my teammates, you know, they just kept telling, they just kept passing me the ball and kept telling me to shoot it. They said they believed in me, and Coach Moore was like, "Shoot it, shoot it. You're gonna knock it down." And so how, that's what I did. How did you find the strength in this game? You have played all but five minutes in three games in three days. You had so much longevity there. Uh, you know, I've just, I've just been trying to get a lot of treatment. Shout out to all the athletic trainers. <laughs> but yeah, so I was just trying to recover a lot whenever we had downtime. For you, you took a chance to come to NC State. You played at lower levels along the way. Why were you good enough in this moment? Uh, I just believed in myself, and I think that's been the key my, throughout my whole entire career, just believing in myself because um, that's all you can do. You only have yourself, I feel like, and uh, yeah, I think believing and having a lot of confidence is the key. All right, Elisa Kunain, this is your second championship on this court where you came and watched games as a little girl. What does it mean to you to walk away as a champion today? Uh, it means the world. I mean, for this team, this season has been nothing but crazy, but one thing is going to be consistent, the NC State is ACC champion. So just to come out here to this court at home and for all these fans that were able to come out to the game, it's just amazing. Take me through the final two possessions. You had to come up with two crucial defensive stops there with Louisville with the ball under their own basket. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole game to get defensive stops. Um, we knew they were going to attack the basket and especially attack inside. So we just had to make sure we do what we do and get rebounds. You were terrific from the free throw line. How were you so calm and composed down the stretch? After last year, I needed to make my free throws down the stretch. So I just practiced them all season uh, and had some more confidence coming in here. I know some of this is political, but what would you say is the case for NC State is a number one seed in the country. Hey, I mean, we're ACC champions. What else is there to say? You know, whatever seed we're going to be, we're going to go out there and dominate like we did today. Well, thank you both. Terrific tournament from you both. And I'm not sure if your balloon's big enough, but congratulations. Thank you, Holly. Good to see you. NC State 58-56. Yeah. And for the second year in a row, they celebrate here at the Greensboro Coliseum. And now we'll await uh, to see the results from around the rest of the country.
And as Holly referenced, uh, still a chance at a number one seed now in the NCAA tournament. And uh, what a way to start the day. Then the first of our triple header. Let's go to Holly. Well, Coach, you talked all day about how good your defense had been. Tell me what you drew up for those final two defensive <laughs> possessions because they worked. Uh, you know what? He almost got me on my own play, a uh, play that he ran in USA Basketball. He almost got us on that lob on the backside. Uh, Rainer Perez did a great job of taking that away. Of course, what a big shot Rainer hit down here uh, to take the lead. But, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a grinder. Both teams, you know, you've played each other. You know each other so well. Uh, it just, we probably set the game back a little bit because it was so low scoring, but proud of the way we defended and rebounded and hung in there again. We dug ourselves a hole and uh, this team just doesn't quit. They're gonna keep coming at you and really proud of them. Coach, the clock is winding down there. You're trailing in that moment and Reina Perez, a kid that's new to your program, she takes the shot. What went through your mind as she's taking it? I felt pretty good about it. You know, you know, Raina averaged about 20, 20 points a game a year ago. I got a lot of confidence in her ability to knock down shots. And, uh, you know, she's, I keep saying it, she's been such a blessing. You know, I don't know where we'd be without her. She's done just such an awesome job. It looks like she's been here for four years. And uh, today it paid off. You guys are the first game of this championship Sunday. Coach, how does this team make a case for themselves today to be one of the top seeds in the tournament? Well, we've done all we can do, you know. So again, I'm not again, I'm not real worried about it. Uh, to me, it's pretty much just a matter of you're gonna maybe if, if you do meet the other team, you're gonna wear dark and they're gonna wear white. Hey, we're doing pretty well in black, so I don't mind that at all. So it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I, again, I think these kids, uh, you know, we're kind of new to this national party, you know, and uh, so I understand people may not believe it yet, but back-to-back uh, -back ACC championship. That's pretty, that's pretty tough. Well, we appreciate your time, Westmore. Back to back in black. I think it's got to go there right to uh, it. You go like celebrate it. with your uh, team. <laughs> thanks, Holly. Thanks to all these NC State fans. Holly Rowe with the T-shirt. Get the patent on that. Get the trademark. And uh, they have crashed the party again on the national scene. They will, they will give something the selection committee to think about with two road wins this year against number one ranked opponents. They got Louisville and South Carolina in the regular season. And now they win the ACC tournament championship. Trophy hoisted for Westmore. Sixth in NC State's history, Debbie. Impressive, a solid team, a team effort. And in this especially uh, challenging COVID year, it's great to see anybody cut down the nets, Beth. But this is a tough NC State team. Do they deserve to be a number one? Yes, they do. Will they? That's up to the committee. They've already done the work. They've done their job. I don't think anybody wants to see them on their side of the bracket. South Carolina now on deck, set to make its case that they are worthy of a number one seed. They will take on Georgia in our SEC championship game coming up shortly. But it is 58-56, NC State over Louisville. Well, Westmore called a great game, all game, and this time not calling the timeout, trusting the offensive maturity of his team. Perez with an elbow jumper. And then the defensive play on the other end. NC State with a two-point win to go back-to-back -back ACC Tournament Champions. And a point of reference, Beth, NC State, because of winning percentage, had two losses. Louisville had two losses. NC State won the head-to-head. -head. But because of winning percentage, Louisville had the one seed. So really, NC State could be considered a champion as well in the regular season. 58-56, NC State a winner over Louisville. Coming up next, it's the SEC championship game, Georgia and South Carolina. For Holly Rowe and Debbie Antonelli, I'm Beth Mullins. Let's get you back to the studio with Ashley, Rebecca, and Coach Landers. <laughs> 